Hello everyone, my name is Jakub van As. I am the Managing Director and the Founder of Jesus to My Rescue Ministries. This week I'm not going to do a video, but uh, rather an audio clip. And I would like to talk about COVID-19, about the COVID-19 vaccine. And um, I will end with a short word of encouragement. Now there are so many stories and videos doing the rounds warning Christians and non-Christians not to take the vaccine when it's launched. A very few of these stories has been checked and confirmed as true, but some of them are partly correct though. Looking back at history, this world has gone through a lot of viral attacks for thousands of years, some of them killing millions of people. And yes, we even had lockdowns before, even in the times of the Bible. Like God said, nothing is new. Vaccines have also been around for a very long time. In fact, the first recorded vaccine was in the year 1000. Go check it out for yourself at www.historyofvaccines.org. Now, I'm sure that even you received a few vaccines in your lifetime, and many of us take our babies to get vaccinated as well. My question to you today, in general, why now suddenly is it a problem to take a vaccine? Many years ago, there was no social media platforms where people could distribute all kinds of false information and news, but today it is very easy. All right, One theory I personally have as to why people are doing this, spreading this false news, is to limit the number of people who want to be vaccinated so that they are more available for those who do want it. You see, millions of people are waiting to for, the, for the vaccine, yet it will take many years to get everyone vaccinated. So by increasing the number of people who don't want it, it shortens the time frame for those who do. Then, of course, targeting Christians is very easy. Because we as Christians know that the day will come where we will face the Antichrist, the beast, and its mark, which will be forced onto people. So by using scare tactics, many will doubt the vaccine, which will come at a huge cost of lives around the world. My fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, today I want to warn you to make sure of the facts. I've done it. I've even had a meeting with a scientist that works on the vaccine. In fact, that person being a true follower of Jesus Christ. Now, like I said, there are many stories. But I'm only going to touch on a few of them. All right, number one, people say that the vaccine will change our DNA. Did you fact check this? I did. And according to the studies I did, it won't change our DNA. But why not go and do your own research and see for yourself? Then there is the story of aborted fetuses being used. This, in fact, in, is true in some way. In the 1960s, lung tissue of two-week-old fetuses, only two of them, were used for testing purposes of vaccines that were then used for the chickenpox and polio vaccines, and maybe a few others as well. Although as a Christian, I do not support the fact that they did this. But these fetuses were aborted legally, and they also known. The lung tissue used did not change the DNA of humans who took these vaccines. In fact, many of you reading this or listening to this message right now took those vaccines. Since then, many other methods were used for the, for the, for, for the vaccines and no more fetuses were aborted, documented. One of the last stories is that the COVID-19 vaccine will kill, or one of the latest stories, is that the COVID-19 vaccine will kill the God gene in us, causing us to not believe in God anymore. Ay, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, come on, really, a God gene? We are spirit and we are body. Our connection with Christ Jesus is spiritual, not through some sort of God gene. How can any true follower of Christ be? Believe this nonsense. We need to fact check everything we read and not believe every word we hear or every video we see to be true. When you read or see something, have you prayed about it? Have you asked the Holy Spirit to show you the truth? Have you gone into fasting to ask the Lord to show you the truth? How come people can sit for hours a day and read all kinds of nonsense on social media yet they don't even read God's word 
If the time we spend reading or watching videos on social media or TV are spent in the Bible, then we would already know the answers to all the questions. Social media stories confuse people. It influences people wrongly and it even scares people. How confusing must this be for a newly born Christian? Let's talk about scientists quickly. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God uses doctors and has been doing so for thousands of years. Even one of his disciples was a doctor. Many of us have been praying for months on end for this crazy virus to stop. And then when God gives doctors and scientists the wisdom to create the vaccine, we turn around and we say that it's not from God? Just think about this for a while. What if the vaccine is the boat God is sending to His people to save them from this virus? Now let me talk about the mark of the beast. Many videos are going around saying that this vaccine is going to be the mark of the beast. Now I'm not saying that it will not be going forward, that the use of the vaccine could result in the creation of such a mark, but the actual vaccine being launched now is not done in a way to force people to take some sort of a mark to prove that they took it. Once that happens, well then don't take it for sure because I won't. The actual vaccine cannot be the mark of the beast. Let's read Revelation 13 and I'm going to read from verse 14 to 17. He ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast, so that it would be forced on all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. I want to remind you again of verse 16. It, it says that it will be a physical mark, which is my point number one. And it will be either on the right hand or the forehead, which is my point number two. Now I want you to go and study the entire revelation yourself and then, only then, make your decision on taking or not taking the vaccine. If you want the truth, brother and sister in Christ, read the word of God. Some people now even say that this mark and description and how it will happen might not be exactly as it is written in Revelation. Now, brothers and sisters, it <laughs> no, it will be exactly as it is written. Jesus gave John the exact words to write down. So if we say it might not happen exactly that way, we are saying that Jesus lied to John. God does not lie. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm not saying that COVID-19 or the vaccine is not end of time science. In fact, it probably is. But let us be sure about the facts around the taking of the vaccine, especially the ones we read and watch on social media. Making a wrong decision could cost someone's life. Personally, I will take the vaccine, but that's just me. Unless, of course, I'm forced to take the mark on my right hand or my forehead that will prove that I have been vaccinated. If God is sending me a boat to save me from the storm, then why will I let it pass? I'm not trying to convince you today to take the vaccine. This is not at all the purpose of this message. I simply want you to make a decision to take it or not to take it based on what the Holy Spirit and the Word of God tells you, not what man or ridiculous social media stories say. I end with a word of encouragement for you. This year has not been easy for anyone, and we all feel as if our cups ran empty. Let us reflect on our year, take what is good from it, move forward with Christ Jesus, asking Him to fill our cups with His living water, so that we can enter 2021 with new hope, energy, power, and a positive mindset. I leave you with these powerful words of Psalm 23, and I'm going to read from verse 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, He leads me beside still waters, He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. 
Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. May your cup overflow in 2021. May God bless you and protect you and keep you safe. Bye-bye.